You guys, you guys, you won't believe it. Otto, where have you been? You almost missed free time. Uh... It's only one of the best parts of Sunday school. Now let's go get some toys before all the good ones are taken. No, that's why I'm late. I just got a label maker. As you stand here talking, Ottoman, the good toys are being snatched up by the other children. Soon, there will be nothing left for us but broken pop-up books and ugh, plastic fruit. Oh, she got the space shuttle. Exactly. The worst part about free time is everyone running around grabbing stuff. If we label the toys, we'll know what belongs to who. <laughs> it tickles. There. Everything is divided. Now we can have fun. This doesn't seem fair. Some kids didn't even get a toy. And then he lays a chair is a great toy. It can be a car or a spaceship. Whoa! Oh, ancient Aztec ruins. <sighs> Do you want to play catch, Victor? I would, but that would require me to throw my ball to you. And as you can clearly see from the label, it is my ball. But if I throw it to you, I don't know whose ball it would be anymore. I, I'm, I'm sorry, Clara. It, it would just make things way too complicated. What am I supposed to do with this? Wow, you got the train! That's one of the best toys. Yeah, but Otto got the tracks. <sighs> Finished. All the hard work of setting up the train tracks with none of the rewards of actually playing with them. Hey, wait a minute. Hey, Monty. Hi, Addo. Why is everyone so unhappy? Unhappy? No one's unhappy. Hey, that's mine! Give it back! No, you can't make me! All right, some people are a little unhappy. I was wondering if I could get a toy. You didn't even get one toy? No. That's not good. Even Jack's got that trivia game for grown-ups. Who won the 1935 World Series? Kitties! That doesn't look like much fun either. Hey, why don't we ask Ada if she wants to play with the train on the railroad tracks? We can't. Her name is on the train and my name is on the tracks. There. Now we can all play. That's actually really simple. Thanks, Monty. Sure thing. Uh, what did I do? Hey, Ada! <gasps> Want to see how fast we can make that train go? Yeah! Okay, here we go. All right! <laughs> hey, Clara, how about I take you up on that game of catch? Sure! person who doesn't understand it. You think we're the only ones who don't know? Look around at all these smiling faces, Clara. How could they be so happy if they didn't already understand how the resurrection worked? They do all look happy. And here I sit with all these questions. What does it mean that Jesus came back? Is he a ghost? A uh, ghost Clara, Ada, you have got to try this tartar sauce. Not now, Otto. We have too many questions about the resurrection. You mean Jesus coming back to life? Yeah. How did it happen? And was Jesus a ghost? And if he was a ghost, what kind of ghost was he? Oh, well, <clears throat> it... Now that you mention it, I don't think I understand it either. But I don't think Jesus was a ghost. I mean, in Pastor Donna's sermon, she said that he had a body. That, and he said he wasn't a ghost. That's just what a ghost would say. 
Pastor Donna also said we're called to be witnesses to this event. But how can we be witnesses if we don't understand it? Oh, poor Ada, Otto, and Clara. I was once like you, plagued with questions about the resurrection. <laughs> but now I understand everything. Really? So, tell us. How did Jesus come back to life? It's quite simple, Ottoman. You see, it's, um... Uh... And was he the same person? And Jesus said he was hungry. Do ghosts get hungry? I wonder why it took three days. I'm wondering what it means to be a witness. I wonder why Jesus said, peace be with you. I wonder how many jelly beans are in this jar. Wait, Ada, look! Everyone has questions about the resurrection. You're right. It must be okay for us to have questions about how it happened. But how can someone believe and wonder about something at the same time? Well, I was just thinking that the disciples saw it all up close, and they still had a lot of questions. But they were witnesses because they knew it happened. So, was Jesus a ghost? No, Clara, we settled that. Jesus had a body and he ate fish. Ghosts don't do that. Oh, thank goodness. Twelve jelly beans for everyone. <laughs>
was really mean, Victor. Thank you, Clara. Uh, especially right before our field trip. Field trip? What field trip? We're going to Nazareth now. <laughs> Nazareth now? You know, the theme park where Bible times come to life? That's today? Oh, no! Did you forget your permission slip? No! My great aunt Marjorie refused to sign it. She thought I made the whole field trip up to get out of my homework. Which is admittedly a very clever idea, but completely untrue! So, you can't go? I thought I had more time to convince her of the truth. Blast my hard-earned reputation as a master of hijinks and shenanigans! <laughs> What's wrong with Victor? He can't go to Nazareth now. He doesn't have permission. There's the bus. Everybody get out your permission slips. Bye, Victor! Bye, Victor! Bye, Victor! where we don't have to worry about being tricked by Victor. Or frightened. Or manipulated by language. Yeah, we'll be able to have a great time because Victor isn't here. <laughs> hey guys, I think you're forgetting that the Bible says those who love God must also love others. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> this is Victor we're talking about. Do you think Victor will get lonely? Who cares? <laughs> <laughs> My favorite was the parable of the sewer coaster. Ooh, mine was the Pontius Pilates exercise studio. The Solomon's Temple log shoot was awesome! This is the best day of my life! Hi, Victor. Here to rub it in, Jax? Uh, I got you something. Oh, what? A group photo without me in it? No, here. A present. For, for me? Oh, I saw it and I thought of you. Sorry you couldn't go on the field trip, Victor. I, I know you really wanted to. Jax? Yeah? What did I do to deserve this? Nothing. It sure is. There's so much of it. Yeah, I'm making warm fuzzies for the entire congregation. Well, that seems like a lot of work. It is a huge amount of work. But if it makes Jesus happy. Jesus? Yeah, I'm working for Jesus full time now. And let me tell you, he expects a lot. I didn't know he was hiring. Great chat, Clara, but I got fuzzies to make. Got to impress the big boss. Why are you cleaning that car with a toothbrush? It's called detailing, Clara. I want to make sure this car is spotless for whoever owns it. You don't know whose car this is? Well, yeah. I'm spontaneously washing complete strangers' cars. I wouldn't want Jesus to think I'm slacking off and fire me. I don't think Jesus fires people. <laughs> That's a good one, Clara. You know, Otto, you look really tired. I'm exhausted. All this pressure to not disappoint Jesus. Having him as a boss is a lot to live up to. Ah, well, we gotta get back to it. Huh? Hi, Clara. Ah! Otto? Yep. What are you doing in there? I'm volunteering overseas. That's gotta show Jesus that I'm the hardest worker he has. But why are you going in a box? International flights are expensive. Așa este, mai băiatule. Extraordinar acest băiat. Uh, don't you need more air holes? No time! Here comes the mail carrier. Gotta keep the boss happy. Is Jesus really our boss? I thought he was our friend. I mean, that's what he told the disciples. See you in a month. Delivery. Otto? Otto? 
Clara, thank goodness I'm back. Well, that was fast. You've only been gone since this morning. Did you make it overseas? No, I didn't put enough postage on. But I did have a lot of time to think in that box, Clara. And I realized that you were right. Jesus isn't my boss. He's my friend. How did you figure it out? Well, Sharita really helped straighten me out. Who's Sharita? She's the second shift floor manager at the mail distribution center. Uh, oh. She said that Jesus doesn't want to boss us around. Jesus loves us and wants to work with us to share his message of love with everyone. Well, that's a relief. Yeah. She also told me that it's technically not legal to mail yourself. Yeah. Just think, how would you go to the bathroom? <laughs> oh, that was no problem. People are trying to pray. He came from the narthex. <gasps> Victor! You broke the statue of Matthias! No! That Matthias, he was the hip, young, cool apostle. The only apostle not to be chosen by Jesus personally. Because he became an apostle after Jesus went to heaven. But before the Holy Spirit descended upon the disciples. The fact that we weirdly know so much about Matthias makes the fact that you broke his statue even worse! Can Victor hear us through that trash can? Ah! Oh! Oh, thank goodness! Oh, gift of sight! I shall never take you for granted again! Victor, you broke the statue of Matthias! You've never liked Matthias because he was the replacement for Judas! Guilty! My love for Judas in no way weakens my deep respect for Matthias. And I was defending his statue. Quite valiantly, I might add. You were defending it? Yes! You see, it all started when I was taking my usual Sunday stroll through the narthex. I began to sense danger. I immediately moved to defend the Matthias statue, but I suddenly went blind as Samson. I could not see what the danger was. Nor could I see what exactly happened to the statue. But I am innocent. That's the best you could come up with? Why don't you just admit that you broke the statue? Why would I break the statue? You were probably trying to steal it! Guilty! How can you say these things? There are no witnesses among you. Not even I witnessed it. I witnessed it. You did? Yes, indeedy do. I called to the stand Montgomery. What did you see, Monty? Well, I was in the narthex playing a game of freeze tag with myself when I saw some really funny looking zebras. And you could tell no one had taught them how to share marshmallows. And when Victor came in, the zebras ran up the walls, but they dropped their marshmallows, and that's when they threw a trash can on Victor and knocked over the statue of Matthias. <laughs> they really do like their marshmallows. Are you sure that's what you saw, Monty? Yeah, it seems a little far-fetched. I know, that's what I saw. <laughs> Monty was witness to the events, just as uh, Matthias was witness to the miracles performed by Jesus. I guess it would go against all Matthias and his statue stood for if we ignored the word of an eyewitness. You'd all be hypocrites. All right, Victor, we believe you, but only because Monty witnessed it. Innocent. Check out my drawing of the disciples. Oh, careful! They've got fire really close to them. Yeah, I drew it there. It's the fiery tongues that show up in their story. That's pretty good, Adeline. But check this out. Ah, house tornado! An emotional response for my artwork. Just what I was hoping to inspire. Thank you, Clarabella. Clara, it's all right. These are the things that happened in the Pentecost story when the Holy Spirit showed up. What did you do for your picture? I drew the disciples a couple of days after all the scary stuff happened on Pentecost, and they've come to terms with being able to speak all languages. That's Matthias eating a sandwich. Um... Wow, Clara, I was under the impression that we were supposed to show the disciples being filled with the Holy Spirit. 
Not cold cut sandwiches. I did draw them filled with the Holy Spirit, and it's a grilled cheese sandwich. Then where's the Holy Spirit? It's inside of them. Yeah, but you see how in our pictures they have fire and powerful winds rushing all around them. Your picture doesn't have any of that. No, I just wanted to draw what it looked like when the Holy Spirit fills me. And it usually looks like this. Fills you? What do you mean, Clara? Yeah, you can't speak all languages or heal the sick like the disciples did. And I've never once seen you cast out an unclean spirit. No, I guess not. Oh, but when I was too scared to go on stage for the talent show last winter, I hid in the costume rack and wasn't going to come out until it was all over. But when I got pushed out on stage, people thought hiding was my special talent. And I just felt inside like, Clara, you can totally do this. And then I did. I have no memory of that. I remember. So you think that was the Holy Spirit, Clara? I think so. Pastor Donna says that the Holy Spirit inspires us, and I was pretty inspired. So it's kind of like the time I was sick with the gerbil flu. Monty made me a greeting card that had everyone saying how much they missed me. Ada, this is one of those cards where you can record your voice. Ada, Ada, should I come out of this coat or not? I need your advice. Ada, come back. There's no balance to my tricks without you. You were sick? I don't remember that. Where was I? I felt so moved and loved by you all that I started feeling better. Do you think that could have been the Holy Spirit, too? I think it might be. But none of that stuff sounds as amazing as fire that doesn't burn you or a tornado in your house. No, it doesn't sound amazing, but it really felt amazing. But those things could happen anytime. To anyone. You're right, Victor. Anyone can be filled with the Holy Spirit. Yeah, Victor, good point. You really get this Holy Spirit stuff. Hey, what happened to Monty? He was sitting right here a minute ago. Oh, while you were getting glitter, Monty got a splinter from one of the craft sticks, and Miss Jane is taking a look at it. He had to leave class for a splinter? Well, actually, I think that... That must have been some splinter. It must have been so bad that Miss Jane had to take him to the doctor. Or maybe even the emergency room! How could a splinter be that bad? Did I say splinter? It was probably something even worse. Something so bad they'll have to fix Monty's whole hand with... Uh, with a robot hand! That's ridiculous, Otto. It is? Of course. They wouldn't give him a robot hand. They'd give him a whole robot arm. In fact, he's probably going to be given bionic legs as well. Super powerful bionic legs. Does he need bionic legs? After the accident caused by Miss Jane's far too ambitious craft project? How could he not, Clara? That is so scary. So now Monty will be part Monty, part machine, thus making him Robo-Monty. Boy, boy! How long do you think it will be until he starts fighting crime? He could be doing it right now. We need to find out. Happy trees and Mimi! Spring. Yep. Mimi, do you know if your brother Robo Monty is fighting crime right now? Robo Monty? Is that a new nickname? Because it's pretty awesome. It's what we're calling Monty now that he's been turned mostly into a robot. What? You know, the horrible accident that forced science to turn him into a super powered Robo Monty? Monty was in an accident? I think it's more accurate to call it a tragedy, since most of his body was replaced with robot parts. Oh no! My poor little brother! This is the opposite of wonderful! I gotta go find him! Wow! She did not view this with her usual optimism. Well, it, it is very upsetting news. Yeah, very upsetting. <gasps> um... What? Monty! You're not a robot! Yay! I'm surprised an accident that horrible didn't have more lasting effects. You mean the splinter? Oh, yeah, it hurt some. Miss Jane fixed it, though. See? Uh, wait, which hand was it? You're in big trouble, Montgomery. Your poor sister is rushing to the hospital because she thinks you were very badly hurt. Why does she think that? 
because we told her you were hurt. And why did you tell her that? Because we've been told you were hurt? Wow, all that from folks just saying things? Who knew words could make such a mess? <laughs> we should probably go tell Mimi. Probably. Mimi! 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 I don't think I'm a robot! You can call off the auditions, everyone. Your Jesus has arrived. You think Chet's going to cast you as Jesus? Of course. I am the most likable and natural actor in all of Sunday school. Likeability is not the only thing you need to play Jesus. Jesus has the most lines of anyone. It requires someone responsible enough to memorize everything. I can memorize things. <laughs> well, I don't mean to brag, but I've memorized the names of all the books of the Bible. <laughs> Adelaide, to properly portray our Lord and Savior, one must possess edginess, and I possess edginess in spades. Well, I don't have any spades, but I do own a white robe, and Jesus wore a white robe. I'm auditioning for the part of Brother Rabbit. Otto! Yes, your directorship? You're up. For my monologue, I'll be reading the parable of the sower. Great. Ah, he stole my monologue. Well, I guess it's time for my secret weapon. Jesus wasn't a ventriloquist. We will let Chet be the judge of that. Uh, next, please. Nailed it. Next. Nailed it. All right, next. Nailed it. Uh, next, please. Nailed it. Okay, uh, thank you. Nailed it. Uh, great work, everyone. I'll be right back with my casting decisions. A mere formality. He already promised the role to me. No, he didn't. He did with his eyes. You wish. Okay, guys. I've made my decision. I knew you'd make the right choice. I will not let you down. Um, actually, Otto, I'm not casting you as Jesus. What? Then who? Jax? But he didn't even audition! True, but he did volunteer to be the assistant to the assistant stage manager. Look at him. So calm, so humble, so gentle. He's got the perfect energy to play Jesus. But he's just sweeping the floor! And it's really working for me. Hey, Jax, I'd like to formally offer you the role of Jesus in the Harvest Pageant. Really? Jesus? Oh boy, that's a lot of wines. I'll work very hard, Mr. Chet. I don't doubt it, buddy. Glad to have you aboard. But what about the rest of us? You will all make perfect disciples. But which disciples? Um, split them up how you like. It doesn't really matter. They're all pretty interchangeable. Great work today, everyone! So, Jax, I'm thinking we could start some table work tomorrow. And maybe the next day.